I came about this because Cook Wood sent me some wood a while back and they sent these beautiful pieces of teak. And I never seen anything that large and that thick. It's two inches thick and about 26 inches square. And for the longest time I kept thinking, well, you know, I can make something out of it, but I'm gonna have to cut it up and everything else like that. And like, I always tell you, you gotta waste wood to make something really nice. Well, this time I didn't wanna waste any wood to make something nice. So that's why we went big. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is mark it up to find the center. So I'm taking my long ruler all the way to the edge, all the way to the edge down here. And I wanna be as accurate as possible because being careful with your measurements through this whole project is something that'll make this a lot easier on you to turn. So there we have our first mark. Bring this one up here, come into that corner down there. I'm trying to make sure I leave enough space there because the pencil lead is pretty thick. So, although if I'm off a quarter inch, it won't kill me. So anyway, there we go, that's our center. Now I had to dig deep to find a compass that would draw a circle as big as I want. And I found this in storage and I'm not even sure where I got it, probably at an art store or something a long time ago. But I used to use this to draw out where I was gonna cut a raw log uh, to make bowls out of. But the easiest way to do this is I'm just going to center this point and then slide this so I get to about a quarter inch away from the end there. And then just to make sure I'm going to swing it back this way, another quarter inch. And oops, I'm looking good there. I'm looking good there. Why am I going a quarter inch from the edge? Because this wood might have some cracks in there that I can't see uh, on the grain because it's darkened, they sealed it, everything else like that. So by cutting at least a quarter of an inch into all sides of this, I'll be able to see the raw wood, the fresh exposed wood, and I'll see if there's any cracks in there. The other piece I did, there were no cracks, so I'm really not worried about that on this because I think these both came from the same tree, just about the same section as a matter of fact. So that's the first circle I want on there. The second circle is going to deal with my faceplate. Now, my faceplate, <laughs> I won this at my uh, wood turning club in a drawing one time. It's 10 inches across. So I want to take this and bring it into where I'm only going to do a five inch circle. And actually I want to do just a little bit more than a five inch circle. So let's see here, just, uh, just a tick. Because what I want to do is draw a circle on here that is just slightly larger than the diameter of the face plate. That will help me center it later. So I'll bring this in like so. Draw again. Wish I had a Sharpie that I could attach into this thing. It'd be a lot darker. There we go. That looks a little large. Are my measurements off here? <laughs> yeah, let's do that again. Okay. Yeah, see, when you measure twice, draw once. Okay, I did six inches. Let's bring that back to five. That is why you watch me. Because now you know math is important, kids. Stay in school. Yeah. Also, I don't have an eraser, so we'll just live with that mark on there. So now we're making a really cool design. <laughs> Let's draw this one more time, and I'll show you what I'm doing here. There. Now it's just barely exposed on there, so now I can center this easily. Take that off. That weighs about 10 pounds, by the way. This weighs 35 or 40. <laughs> so we're gonna go to the bandsaw. And the way I wanna cut this is slowly and carefully as if that goes without saying, right? But the thing is, I wanna start cutting in from an edge and I wanna cut all the way around and end up on edge and just exit out here and do, do it in squares or corners. That way I don't do the whole thing at once. This is too big to mess with to do that. So, I'm gonna turn the bandsaw on and just feed it in slowly. And I wanna be very accurate. I wanna stay on that line as much as I can because when I mount this big thing up on the lathe, the better I cut this, the more less trouble I will have actually to get it rounded out right. So this is one of those take your time and enjoy the process moments. <laughs> I love the fact that I have such a big bandsaw table on here because it helps me put large work up here and support it well. If you have a smaller bandsaw table, you can actually get yourself an outrigger that sits here and 
uh, holds up that end. They make them. This is looking good. Wow, I'm right on that line. That's really good. Wish I could drive a golf ball that straight. Okay, now I'm coming up to the side here, and I'm going to exit out. There we go. And now I'm going to move on to the next corner.